Look, oftentimes in the Bible, when God wants to teach a lesson, he uses money. And, and the reason is that money is something that we use every day. Uh, every one of us, we have some money. Uh, we all have different amounts, but we all have to use it in life. And it's something very tangible. We, we hold it in our hands. We touch it. We use it. And, and we understand how money works. So a lot of times in the Bible, what God does when he is, uh, when, when he is teaching us, he will use He'll use money as an illustration. And we're going to get to a passage in, in Job in just a minute where we'll talk about that. But I, I, want, to, I want to just kind of illustrate how trust works with this. We've been in a series of messages over the last few years. We've been talking about the topic of trust. And there's a passage in Job that uses some financial terms to describe for us exactly what trust is and, and, and what, we can, what we can get out of that. Uh, and, and, and invest in it. And what, what I want to do is I just want to kind of use, I got 10 $1 bills here, and I'm going to give this to Mr. Danny to illustrate the trust. And I'm, I'm trusting that he's going to give this back to me in just a minute when I, in just a minute when I ask. But trust is, is kind of like money in that we've all got a different amount of trust. We've all got different levels of trust, and there's only a few things that we can do with money. We can spend it, uh, we can save it, we can give it, or we can invest it. And a lot of times when we, when we invest something, the whole purpose of investing is we want to get a return. We want to get something back out of our financial investment. And the same thing is true of trust. Let me see that. I've, you're trustworthy. All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to have to work here, so I'm glad. We're going to do this several times in, uh, in the next minute. But look, we all begin with a different level of trust. Some of you are very trusting. You might be like a 10 on, on the trust scale, and some of you are a little bit more skeptical of folks, and you might be a 2 because you've been burned a whole lot in life. Let's say that Mr. Danny's a 7. And uh, I kept three of these dollars. Let's, let's say he's a seven on, on the trust factor. But we're talking one day, and uh, I tell him that I'm going to do something. He comes and asks me to do something. I say, I'm going to do it. And he puts his trust in me. And he invests his seven dollars worth of trust in me, and I do it. And, and, and I do what he says, but when I give it back, he's earned a little bit more. He's earned a little bit more of, of my trust, or I've earned a little bit more of his trust. Now, now he's got $8 worth of trust in me. So he comes to me later, and he asks me to do something, and I say, I'll do it. So he invests, he invests his $8 worth of trust. And over time, uh, I, I proved to be trustworthy uh, enough that he has his full trust in me. He, he trusts me. I, I'm, I'm proven to be trustworthy. And then let's say he comes to me one day, and he asks me to do something, and I say, I'll do it. So he, he invests all his trust in me, but I forget. You ever been in that situation before? You told somebody you were going to do something, you just forgot. It was an honest, honest mistake. But when he came back later and said, did you do that? I have to say no. So I've, what I've done is I've kept a little bit of his trust, but I've given most of it. I've given most of it back. Now, he understands that. He's a forgiven man. He's been in the same situation. So later on, he comes to me and he says, look, I, I, I want you to do something for me again. And I say that I'm going to do it. So he invests his uh, trust back in me. But he doesn't have all of it to invest. He only has that $9 worth of trust. And this time, this time I just flat out lie about it. I, I don't do what I say and uh, I, I don't really get around to it and, and all that. And when, he, when he asks me about it, I lie about it and he catches me in a few lies. And that costs a good chunk of my trust. And that way, and that time when he gets it back, he only gets, he only gets $3 worth of, worth of my trust back. Hate that I told you this to begin with. I told you I'd pay you ten dollars for helping me out. Thank you. <laughs> you can go now. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> no. You know, trust is a whole lot like money, and that we have the ability to lose it and we have the ability to gain it, depending on who or what we put our trust in. In Job chapter 15, verse 31, the verse you see on the screen, it says, Let him not deceive himself. This is God speaking. Let him not deceive himself by trusting what is worthless, for he will get nothing in return. God talks about being a good steward a whole lot in the Bible. And uh, one of the things he talks about is when we invest, he wants us to get a good return financially for our investments. That's the whole purpose. We, we, we invest our money in something that, so we can get a good return. And he wants the same thing 
with our trust. He wants us to invest our trust in things that are, that are trustworthy, in people that are trustworthy, so that we can get a good return on that trust. We started a couple weeks ago by looking at this uh, topic of mess, or in this series of messages, by looking at this topic, by looking at three things that God tells us are always 100% trustworthy all the time. And they're the only three things that we've got in this world that are always going to be trustworthy. God is always going to be trustworthy. His word is always going to be trustworthy. And the covenant that we're in through his son, Jesus Christ, it is always going to be trustworthy. Now, anything outside of that, can we trust people? Yes. Can, can, do we have some trustworthy people in our lives? I sure hope so. I, I hope that you trust your spouse. I hope, kids, I hope you trust your, your parents. I hope you trust your Sunday school teacher. I hope you're able to trust your teacher at school. I hope you're able to trust your coworkers and your friends. But outside of the Bible and God and his covenant, there's nothing that is 100% trustworthy. If we put all of our trust in anything except for the Lord, we're going to be let down from time to time. And the Bible has a lot to say about this topic. In Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 4, he tells us not to put our trust in riches. In uh, Jeremiah 29, 31, he tells us not to put our trust in lies. In Habakkuk 2.18, he tells us not to put our trust in idols. In Psalm chapter 20, verse 7, he says, don't put your trust in militaries or in nations. There are a lot of verses in the Bible that tell us things that we shouldn't put all of our trust in. Not to invest all of our trust in because they don't have as good of a return as putting our trust in the Lord. We, we mentioned this uh, a few times over the last couple of weeks, but the scripture tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, where to put our trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That's a true investment. We can go all in with God because we know we're going to get a good return on that investment. We've talked a little bit about that, but I want to I address this morning these things that we're told not to put our full trust in. And, and I mentioned a few of them there. I read some passages of scripture just a second ago uh, of a few different things. But when you look at the list of things that were given by God and his word not to put our full trust in, there's two that are mentioned very frequently in the Bible. There's two things that we're told not to put our trust in very frequently in the Bible. And I was thinking about this past week. Why is that? Why does God keep harping on this over and over again throughout Scripture? And the only conclusion I came to was that God does this because he created us. And he knows us. And he knows the inclinations that we have of where we put our trust that we might not should sometimes, or, or where we put too much trust at times. So I want to focus in on just these two topics this morning uh, that, that, that we can dive into and hopefully uh, just live this out in our lives as Christians. The first, time, the first topic or issue that God deals with spends a lot of time in the scripture pleading with us not to, to put our complete trust in, is he doesn't want us to put our complete trust in ourselves. I know this runs contrary to the very humanistic philosophies that, that dominate our culture today. Where we, where we are fed a very steady diet of believe in yourself. You can do anything. You can be anything. Guess what? No, you can't. <laughs> this, it's, a, it's a lie. You really can't be anything. Uh, you can't do absolutely anything. We've got some limitations on us. But this is the same philosophy that Satan went and attacked Adam and Eve with in the very first temptation. Remember, they were, in the, they were there in the garden and Satan went up to Adam and Eve and said, Hey, you ought to eat that fruit. I said, Well, we can't eat the fruit. God's told us not to. I said, Well, here's why God told you not to. And this is what Satan said. If you eat of the fruit, then you will become like God, knowing good from evil. That was, that ended up being a lie. But they believed that if they ate the fruit, they would become like God. And all, all that kind of humanism in, in, in that philosophy, it's all touchy and feely and popular. But I want, I want you to listen to what the Bible says instead of what culture says. The Bible teaches us for several different reasons not to put our trust in ourselves. The first thing he tells us not to do is to put our trust in our own righteousness and in our own goodness. Ezekiel 33 verse 13 says, if I tell you, and this is God speaking, he 
says, if I tell a righteous person that they will surely live, but then they trust in their righteousness and do evil, none of the righteous things that person has done will be remembered. They will die for the evil that they have done. If you are trusting in your own goodness to buy your ticket to heaven, you're going to be mighty disappointed when you stand before God on judgment day. You're going to be mighty disappointed. If you're trusting in your own righteousness to earn your way into heaven, you're going to be mighty disappointed. Because we're told in scripture there is only one perfect man. There's only one righteous man and his name is Jesus Christ. For the rest of us, we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And we're told that the wages of our sin is death. It's separation from, from our heavenly father. And the only way that we can be reconciled back to him is not to put our trust in our own righteousness, but to put our trust in his righteousness and to put our trust in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the only way that, 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 that we can be saved. If, if we put our trust in our own goodness, we are going to end up letting ourselves down. The second thing the Bible says about that topic is he, he tells us to not put our trust in our own beauty. Now, some of us don't have that problem, so I'm going to also include our bodies because uh, it kind of goes along with it. But Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 15 says, but you trusted in your beauty and used your fame to become a prostitute. Here's the problem with putting your trust in your beauty. It won't last. Uh, if you're a pretty person, you might be very proud of how you look. You might say, whew, I got me some good hair. You know, I got me some pretty dimples. I've got me some uh, lovely tan, you know, in this, this time of year. You might be happy of all your body parts and all this stuff. But eventually, time is undefeated. And eventually, your beauty is going to flee. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30 says, beauty is fleeting. Have you ever seen this with somebody? Like you've seen somebody and they're just a good looking person. And then you like go a decade or two and you don't see them and you run into them. You're like, whoo, beauty fled. You know, <laughs> the Bible's right. <laughs> Time's undefeated. Beauty has fled. It has left the building. But it's, it's not just, it is not just beauty. It's our bodies in general. If we put our trust in our physical body, it's going to let us down. 2 Corinthians 4.16 tells us that the outer man, our flesh... Our bones, our, 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 our blood, the outer man is perishing day by day. Every day, every year, every decade that passes by, our bodies are perishing. A few years ago, leading up to my 40th birthday, I, I had several people uh, that were a little bit older than me coming in and saying, huh, just wait until you turn 40. Everything starts to fall apart. And I was like, oh my goodness gracious, okay. And I just, I got tired of hearing that after a while. The week that I turned 40, the week, not like a month or two later, the week that I turned 40, their prophecies came true. I was playing basketball with Kevin and my Achilles tendon decided to quit working. And that thing took like six months to recover from. I, I, I was walking around like this, you know, trying to, <laughs> trying to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that thing. And still today, like I can do about what I want to, but I can't do any of it as fast as I was because my Achilles tendon, it wakes up and says, hey, remember me? Uh, you're 40 now. I went to the eye doctor around that same time and they came in after the exam and said, uh, did you just turn 40? I said, yeah. I said, yeah, it figures. Then they gave me prescription glasses. Kevin was picking on me so bad during that time, calling me old man and all this type of stuff and, you know, uh, mocking me the way I was walking, and <laughs> walking around. So I started giving him the same speech that those wise old folks had been giving me before I turned 40. And I was telling him, I was like, hey, your time is coming, bud. Time is undefeated. It is going to catch up with you one day. If you've seen Kevin walking around here the last couple of weeks, he's walking like this because he's got sciatica. I haven't reminded him of that one time. I've reminded him more, much more times than just one. If somebody would bring him a walker in next week and present it to him, I'd really appreciate that. But don't have trust. Don't have your confidence. Don't put your trust in your body because it's going to let you down. Then there's one other thing that the Bible tells us about ourselves not to put our trust in. And that's in our own abilities. Psalm chapter 44 verse 6 says... I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. I, I was looking it up this past week to see who wrote those words. I thought it might be David, but it was even better than that. 
The sons of Korah were the ones that wrote Psalm 44, that wrote those words. Here's what the sons of Korah did. They were the gatekeepers to the tabernacle and later into the, to the temple itself. Essentially, what they were, they were like the secret service agents protecting entrance into the White House. Now, the, that's probably a bad illustration to use after what happened a couple of weeks ago. But it's, that, that would be the, the cl closest equivalent that we have in our culture to what these guys were doing. And so these guys would have been experts with a bow. They would have been experts with a sword. There would have been really nobody in their culture that was better than them. But they, in their humility, said these words. They, put, I, they said, I put no trust in my bow. I put no trust in my sword. In humility, they, they recognized that even though they were experts with their bows, they were experts with their sword, even as experts, they could, they could miss a shot with their bow. Or even as experts, they could lose a battle with their sword. If these guys didn't put their full trust in their abilities as experts, we probably need to learn from them and not do the same. You're, you're all experts at something different. Most likely it's not a bow or a sword. It's, it's something different. Don't put your full confidence. Don't put your full trust in that. Because even as an expert in whatever field you might have, you're going to let yourself down sometimes. Michael Jordan didn't hit every game-winning shot. Babe Ruth didn't hit a home run every time he came to the plate. Tiger Woods didn't sink every winning putt. The, the best in the world still fail, and that's just a reality of, of life. So God's teaching us here. He says, look, don't put your trust in yourself because if you do, you're going to fall. If you do, you're going to fail. He says this, going back to the Proverbs passage that we've been looking at over the last few weeks. Instead, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Our return on our investment is going to be so much better if we put our trust in God than if we put our trust in ourselves. There's a second thing, though, that, that's a major theme as we go through and look at the Bible that God tells us not to put our trust in. Not only does he tell us not to put our full trust in ourselves, he also then teaches us not to put our full trust in in other people either. I started this uh, series of messages a few weeks ago with JD coming up and we demonstrated a trust fall. Uh, I turned my back to him and, and, and crossed my arms. I don't know if you have to cross your arms, but I did. And uh, uh, but I shut my eyes and, and, and we, we, we did a few mock, I did a few mock ones because I wanted to make sure he'd had his hands up ready to go. And then I told him when the real one was coming and I fell back and he caught me. And we demonstrated that trust. And I trusted that JD was going to catch me. Like I said, if not, he would have had a whole lot of paperwork to fill out with the EMS and stuff. So uh, he, he did. I was thankful for that. But it's good to have people in life that we trust. It's so good to have people in life that we trust. But even the people in our lives that are trustworthy sometimes are going to let us down. Sometimes they're going to fail us. And it might not be for, for evil intentions. It might be for, for a variety of different reasons. But sometimes, sometimes trust falls just don't work. You know why that trust fall didn't work? Because of a lack of communication. They didn't tell that little girl, you're supposed to fall backwards. She just, they said fall, so she fell forward. The person catching her assumed they were going, now was that a trustworthy person? It was probably your sister, big sister. Yeah, she was going to catch her. You know, she was, she was trustworthy, but because of a lack of communication, it didn't really come across that way. Look at this one. <laughs> Guy was standing on top of a car. Now, do you know why that trust fall didn't work? Because of a lack of ability. The, the, the guy did not, he didn't have the strength to catch the guy falling from on top of a car. It was a lack of ability that, that led to uh, his trust being broken. Look at another one. Trust fall. <laughs> you know why that one didn't work? Because of a lack of communication, a lack of preparedness. They, they, weren't, they weren't really prepared for that. How many times have you put your trust in somebody and probably did it a little prematurely? They weren't mature enough or they weren't ready for you to put your trust in. And they broke it. It wasn't really their fault. It was, we probably shouldn't have put them in that position. One more. <laughs> now, the reason that one didn't work is they just didn't have good sense. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> that's just stupid. <laughs> but the Bible has some stuff to say about this. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 22 says, stop trusting mere humans. I'm going to read that again. Stop trusting mere humans. Jeremiah 17 verse 5 adds, cursed is the man who trusts in man. Psalm 146 verse 3 adds on to that. It says, do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. For all the reasons that God told us that we can't put our trust in ourselves, we can't put our trust 100% in other people either, or else they're going to let us down. If you have your trust in man, you are going to be let down. And if other people have their trust in you and they trust you 100%, whether you want to or not, there are going to be times in your life where you're going to let them down. I know I have. I, I love my wife more than anybody else in this world. But there have been times when I've let her down because of my thoughtlessness. I love my kids, but there have been times when I have broken their trust because I didn't follow through with something that I said I was going to do. I love this church. But I don't want any one of you to come in here and just sit here on Sunday morning and say, well, the preacher said it. So I'm just going to take that as truth and not verify it with the word of God. Because there have been times that I didn't mean to do it. But I've said something that wasn't right. Not because I, I was trying to purposely lead somebody astray or something like that. But because I'm human. And because I'm wrong sometimes. And this particular guy happens to be wrong a lot of times. We're going we're gonna to lose trust in people from time to time. Simply because of those, the, the fact that we're human. The fact that we fail in life at times. If we put our complete trust in anyone, we're going to be let down. But if we go back to what the, what the scripture says very simply. And we put our trust in the right place. We're going to have a whole lot better return. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. If we put our trust anywhere else, we're going to have some disappointments in life. But Psalm 56 verse 11 sums it up well. It says, in God I trust and am not afraid. What can mere man even do to me? In God I put my trust. Would y'all stand with me and pray this morning? Father, we thank you for having, a, having you as our heavenly father. And just having you as a, a good God. A trustworthy God. We thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you for your word. That, that we can trust what it says. That we can be led by it. Uh, we trust the covenant. Uh, that we can enter into with Jesus. And that, that it is a saving covenant. Lord there are times when people have put our trust in us. And we've let them down. And we might not have meant to. But um, we failed. And, and we have. And we've put our trust in other people. And we know that. A lot of times it's not through any evil intentions or anything, but, um, but they've let us down. But Father, when we, when we look at these things, we do see that you're undefeated because you never let us down. You never let us down. Um, you're always there for us and we can put our complete trust in you. And we just, we just pray that as we leave and go out into the world that we'll make sure that we don't make the mistakes of putting our trust in misguided places that, uh, that we're going to get let down from. That we can put our trust in you, knowing that uh, you always fulfill your word and you always fulfill your promises. It's in Jesus' name we pray.